In the mid-1980s, Apple Computer was a company in transition, trying to navigate a path forward from their aging line of 8-bit Apple II computers, popular with home, school, and small business customers, to a future where graphical user interfaces, controlled by a mouse and a pointer, would help make computers easier to use. In a product lineup that saw the launch of the Lisa in 1983 and the Macintosh in 1984, how would Apple satisfy customers who had picked up their marketing slogan, Apple II forever, and bring a fresh, innovative look to the aging Apple II line? Let's open this box and find out. Hi everyone, I'm Alan Gracia, and welcome to another edition of the Smartphone Fanatics video podcast series. So let's start by taking a look at the computer that's in this box. This computer arrived a couple days ago and my, my daughter said, yeah, dad, I heard the UPS guy deliver it, and um, there was a loud thud on the porch. So hopefully, the 30-some-odd-year-old plastic that's in this, uh, makes up this computer, is going to be intact. A lot of uh, paper uh, padding in here, so that's good. And uh, power cord. And a uh, user manual and a startup disk, so that's also uh, pretty cool. You see those original uh, things here? And let's dig in a little farther. And here's the contents of the box, an Apple 2GS computer. So let's take a closer look at this Apple 2GS uh, that was released in September of 1986. Uh, as I said, I got my parents to buy me one of these uh, pretty quickly and upgraded from my Apple IIe. So uh, we have this keyboard here. Uh, this is one of my favorite keyboards. Uh, my, my most favorite Apple keyboard is the Apple Extended 2. And I know there are many folks out there on the internet who love that keyboard and still use it today. If you have the right adapters, uh, this keyboard uh, can still be used and connected to, uh, say, like a Mac Studio. So we'll have to try that out. But there's some great uh, sound and, and feel on this keyboard. Hey, I'm not sure what kind of key switches are in here. I'll have to do some more research to find that out. But um, this was a separate purchase. We can see it's the Apple desktop keyboard, serial number 186235. Um, so we'll have to take a little bit uh, of a lo closer look at this a little later on. Now, included, also included with this Apple 2GS is a Apple 2GS uh, system disc. It's version 1.1 on a double-sided uh, three and a half inch floppy disc. We see on the back here that it says 1986 Apple Computer, ProDOS 16 based. So you might recall ProDOS uh, from an earlier release on the Apple 2E and then the 2C. This is the 16-bit version of ProDOS that goes along with the Apple 2GS. So we'll be starting up with this floppy disk later. There is another official version of the Apple 2GS operating system called uh, the Apple 2GS GS OS. And the final version of that operating system, I believe, was 6.0.7. We have the power cord, nothing exciting there. Also included in this Apple II GS is a uh, Applied Engineering GS RAM Plus card. Um, Applied Engineering is a very popular third-party accessories maker uh, for the Apple II line and then uh, into the Macintosh era. So this is dated, let's see... Uh, Applied Engineering, copyright 1987. So about a year after uh, the computer was released, uh, this card was made available. So we'll take a look at that as well. Now looking at the Apple 2GS itself, uh, we can see here that the the face is a little bit yellowed compared to the, the top of the Apple IIe. Uh, but, you know, that's to be expected with a computer that's over 30 years old. 
Uh, but we get to do see that that uh, fantastic Snow White design language that was popular uh, in this time, and of course with the Macintosh 2 line of computers as well. On the bottom of the machine here, we can see its uh, label. It's the Apple II GS for Apple Computer Inc., Cupertino, California. Its model number is A2S6000. We can see the serial number there as well. And taking a look around back of the Apple II GS, we can see the ports that it has. So over here on the far left, we have a headphone jack, uh, followed by two serial ports, one for the modem and one for the uh, printer. Then we have a uh, DB-style uh, serial port for the joystick, a floppy disk drive connector. We have the uh, video out here. This is the standard video out that was preferred on this machine, but we also have a composite video as well. And then an Apple desktop bus, an ADB port connector. We have the power uh, socket, and then we have the power button. And now let's see if we can get inside this Apple 2GS and see what's going on in the inside of the case. So there's two tabs here. We're going to go ahead and push those. And then the case is going to tilt away from us towards the monitor there. Kind of difficult to, to get in here. It's not really going to budge. Do you need to be careful with this because again, as I said before, the plastic is quite old and we don't want to don't want to crack it on the the first time this is being opened in, in many years. There we go. And it tilts away from us and then off the case. If we take a closer look uh, at the case itself, um, there's its this is pretty close to the original color, although we can see here on the front it is uh, a little bit yellowed. So not too bad. Um, I don't mind these things too badly because I'm not one to uh, try to retro bright uh, my computer, retro computer. So uh, we'll see where we go with that. But there's the cover. Okay, taking a closer look at this uh, Apple 2GS, we get the case off. We can see the motherboard. We have the power supply uh, that's here. And then the uh, applied engineering memory expansion card here in the memory expansion slot. We also have, as is typical with the Apple II Series machines, uh, expansion slots in the back uh, row of the machine here. Um, right here, we have the Apple II GS CPU. This is the uh, 65C816 CPU. This is a 16-bit version of the 65 uh, series processor that the Apple II used. Uh, located right next to it is its ROM um, chip. I don't know if this is ROM version 00 or ROM version 01. If it's ROM version 0, we're going to have to upgrade this to ROM version 01 with using a replacement chip. But taking a close look, look here, uh, there is a keyboard and a numeric keypad header here. Um, I did not know this until I started researching this, but this motherboard was actually an upgrade option for the Apple IIe. Um, so if you had a regular Apple IIe, um, your dealer can swap out the Apple IIe board with this board connecting your keyboard to this header here. And then if you had the later Apple IIe Platinum Edition, which had the numeric keypad built in, there's a header here to connect the um, numeric keypad that was on that keyboard to this machine. And underneath the power supply is the header for the Apple IIe power, uh, power cord connectors. That was actually really kind of cool. I did not know that uh, until I started researching the Apple IIe and uh, the Apple II GS. Um, and then uh, underneath the uh, power supply here is the Mega 2 chip, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. So let's go ahead and remove the power supply. There's a little tab here. We're just going to do this with my finger so I don't break the plastics and try to just pull that out. Okay, and then it lifts away. Go ahead and pull out the power cable. There it is. And then this uh, Aztec power supply just pulls right out. Um, so this is, again, Aztec used in many of the other Apple II series machines, the 2, the 2 Plus, the 2E variants. Um, so that's the Aztec power supply. These are really reliable power supplies. Um, and then underneath, we see, uh-oh, <laughs> big problem here. Uh, we see that the uh, CMOS battery, the thing that keeps the clock going when the computer's uh, unplugged, is still in this computer uh, 34 years or something uh, later. And the good news is that um, it does not appear to be that this battery has leaked. Um, so that's great news. Uh, we're going to cut that out of there in just a minute. 
And then uh, we have that, um, let's see here. Yeah, this, the Mega 2 chip right here. So the Mega 2 chip uh, helps maintain backward compatibility, surprise, surprise, between this machine and the previous Apple II models in the line. So that's pretty cool that um, this machine can use uh, this Mega 2 chip to maintain compatibility. Um, and then we have a couple other, uh, looks like uh, some other chips here. Dust Bunny, Oof, let's get that out of there, disgusting. Um, and so that's, that's pretty much it. We also have the speaker in here. Um, and then here's that header. Uh, let's see here. Here's that header. If I had an Apple IIb upgrade, the, the IIb power supply would connect to the motherboard right there. Um, overall, a little dusty, but this Apple IIgs is looking like it's in fantastic uh, condition. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and get some uh, wire cutters, and we're going to get that battery out of there before it uh, does some serious damage to this machine. Okay, I've got some really old wire cutters here, and we're going to go ahead and snip out that battery. Here's the battery from that uh, Apple IIgs. We see 187 here. So that was when this went in. And uh, amazingly, this battery did not leak. So that's one more Apple IIgs saved from uh, certain destruction. Let's take one more look at that Apple IIgs motherboard. We can see it right here. It really does look like it's in great condition. It's a little musty inside, not too bad uh, for a machine that's been sitting around for a long time. Um, we can also see the two capacitors here on the motherboard. And uh, just taking a look at those, they look like they're going to be okay. They don't appear to be leaking, but at some point in the future, um, I would imagine they're going to have to be replaced. And here we have the Applied Engineering Memory Expansion Board, the GS RAM card. We see it's copyright 1987. Uh, it looks like there's something scribbled here on the back. Not really sure what that is. 9987PX, it looks like. Um, so I'm not sure what that is. Perhaps a quality control person or something. I'm not really sure. So we have uh, obviously the, the memory expansion bank here. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So these are eight memory chips that make up a 256K uh, bank. So 256 and 256 is 512 uh, memory on this card. According to the, the manual that came with this machine, uh, if I fill in the next batch, that'll give me 768. Another batch would be uh, one meg and then one and a quarter and then one and a half, one and a half megabytes of RAM available on this card. Now, uh, I believe the Apple IIgs that I had had the original Apple memory expansion with just the 256 meg uh, upgrade on it. Um, and I believe that board went to a meg of RAM. So I can add uh, a couple extra sets of 256 to it, um, which is one, one of the very first computer upgrades I did getting these uh, chips from an Apple Fest in Boston. My parents uh, drugged the whole family too because I begged and pleaded and was generally a pain in the neck until they took me. Um, so we, we did one day at the uh, trade floor and I bought some memory for my Apple IIgs. Um, and then we did some educational sightseeing. Ugh, I guess the price you have to pay to get an extra uh, memory expansion modules for your, for your Apple IIgs. So this board again has a uh, 512K of RAM that's in addition to the 128 that's on, on board already. So uh, that's a good place to start playing around with. But uh, at some point in the future, we will go ahead and fully populate this board with uh, its maximum 1.5 megs of RAM for the computer. And with the power supply and the memory card back installed, the final thing to do to this Apple IIgs is close it up. So we'll grab ahead that uh, case, the case cover. We'll tilt it in and back and give it a little push. It snaps into place. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, just like all of the other Apple II models, um, the Apple II, the II Plus, and the two E variants. It's super easy to get inside your Apple II and do the upgrades. And that's uh, a testament to Steve Wozniak's um, sort of pioneering spirit, if you will, of encouraging folks to get inside their computers and, and add to them, enhance them, hack them, whatever. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, brief tour of the Apple IIgs. For me personally, this is a pretty nostalgic computer. Um, after learning about the Apple IIe and command lines and all that sort of stuff, the advancement of color with the keyboard, the, the mouse, the graphical user interface of GSOS, the sound capabilities of this machine, 
it was sort of opening up a whole new frontier of show me what was possible with computers. And that all started with this Apple IIGS, where the GS in Apple IIGS stands for graphics and sound. So that graphical user interface that we saw on the Lisa and the Macintosh is now finally coming to the Apple II line. And in our next video, we'll take a look at the Apple IIGS in action. Um, we'll have a video adapter so you can plug it into our Dell monitor here. And we've got some other interesting upgrades that we can put inside this that I think will be pretty neat to take a look at. So that'll be coming up in our next video. Until then, uh, like and subscribe so you're notified of the next video. I uh, appreciate the thumbs up on this video as it does uh, help our channel here. And until next time, thanks for watching. Archie, you're supposed to be my production assistant.